Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today's our video, we are finally back in action. Now, unfortunately, it's still the international break, so there's no match preview slash fan reactions for that. However, fortunately for us, these days, with the amount of quality and the strength and depth that we have got in our squad, there is a lot of our players out there representing their countries, doing things on the international level. That's why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. To talk about it. Now I know there's still games to come on Tuesday and Wednesday on all that malarkey because international break now is literally littered with games these days. It used to be just two, now it's three. Let's hope there's never four, people. Okay, but I couldn't sit here on the Thursday night and talk about all these games because that video right there would be 55 minutes plus and nobody wants to sit here and listen to me talk about international football for 55 minutes plus. So here's what's happened so far and here's what you need to know. And starting off as always with the old home nation, let's start with Scotland because you may or may not have heard Scotland went ahead and done a wee hang that they hadn't done for 22 years of heart. That's right, Scotland went ahead and qualified for a major competition and our boy Ryan frickin' Jack was slap bang in the middle of that and played a vital role in which was a terrific team performance. Scotland. Now, John McLaughlin was an unused substitute in the game versus Serbia, but the guy in front of him done all right in the actual game. But Ryan Jack went ahead and played the full 120 minutes in which was a massive game of football. And I feel like now, after that performance that Jack will put in there in the midfield, I think anyone who ever had doubts about Ryan Jack from that team, that team, or that team, or even hatred for Ryan Jack, truly understand now what Ryan Jack is all about, and that's a credit to him, he was fantastic in the middle of the park, him, McGregor, McGinn ran the show together and they worked effortlessly. And as you can imagine, because of that effort, because of that work rate, and because of that graph Jack will put in throughout the 120 minutes for Scotland, there was no place for him in the starting 11 as Scotland ran the changes today versus Slovakia as he was one of 10 players that actually dropped out of the actual setup. and I've got to be honest with you, absolutely delighted. <laughs> With that, put my Ranger specs firmly back on there, giving him a wee rest so he isn't playing too much football. Beautiful, very, very happy with that. So I completely agree with that decision, but I didn't agree with the next thing, and that's the fact that once again, John McLaughlin was an unused substitute in the game, right? And I can understand David Marshall doing what he's doing right now, but when they're actually doing rotations, John McLaughlin's been in number two in the camp now over the last three or four camps under Stevie Clark, so everyone I think was expecting him to go in there and be the starting 11, hell he deserves it, but they went ahead and picked Craig Gordon who just recently got a call back up again and he went in to the sticks, now Scotland did go on to lose 1-0 in the game, but I've got to be honest with you, that didn't really sit right with me, I mean John McLaughlin has more clean sheets than Craig Gordon has games this season, so a wee bit disappointed in that, I'm sure John McLaughlin is as well. Now of course there's another Scottish game to come and that's maybe when John McLaughlin is going to get his time to shine but we won't know that until Wednesday people so let's move away from the Scotland first team and let's go to the under 21s then shall we as we had numerous bears called up to represent their country at the under 21 level and a couple actually started by the name of Ross McCrory yes he's still technically a Ranger player sorry I need to keep actually saying that, but so did Nathan Patterson who once again started, but he was actually substituted off at half time and another Rangers player came on by the name of Glenn Middleton and that is when the game completely changed as Glenn Middleton took over that game of football from the first touch to his last, he was electrifying in the game. They trailed 2-0 down at half time when Glenn Middleton came on the park. He scored, he sparked them back into life and the game ended up finishing 2-2 and that is with Scotland getting a red card as well by the way with former Rangers player Billy Gilmore getting sent off and I've watched this seven or eight times and I, didn't, I still didn't understand why he was sent off but massive positive there for Glenn Middleton and that'll do wonders for that kid's confidence as well. And I feel like that's perfect timing right now because this is a lad that burst onto the scene with scoring and assisting in league games, but also in European competitions, people in the group stages. This was the same kid that did that. And yes, he did go on to have an unsuccessful loan, but his character and his personality and his professionalism especially has never ever came into question. He's never late for training. He's never gone out party. And despite 
Coven, that run in the first team, no, no getting anywhere near it. You never hear any negative about this laddie. And I just think with him starting to come back into form, playing so well every time he's touching a ball right now, and with what Jordan Jones went ahead and done a couple of weeks ago, I do think that could be an opportunity for Glenn Middleton to replace Jones in the old rotations for the squad. So I look out for that. Still haven't gave up on the laddie, still got a lot of confidence, and hopefully we see more Middleton hangs this season. Moving away from Scotland though, let's travel over to my brothers from another mother and speak about Northern Ireland and where there was so much positivity as Scotland prevailed in their battle. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for Northern Ireland. They also went the full 120 minutes and so did Stephen Davis, by the way, but it didn't fall their way as they fell doing 2-1 in a game of football, which it did see Stephen Davis sort of walk off the park hobbling, which got everyone, including myself, absolutely bricking it. But I think this is just one of these cases of a tired uh, player because he definitely ran his absolute heart and soul out for his country yet again. And I, I don't think it's anything serious. Yes, he was hobbling, but he literally just played 120 minutes at his age, which I think if you asked any of us watching today's video, should Stephen Davis be playing 120 minutes at that age? Absolutely not, but you try and take him off when his country need him in that type of game. That would never, ever happen. He would rather die out there on the park for his country than get substituted off, and that speaks to the player and the man Davis actually is. And before we go ahead with the next country, there is another player I want to mention, and I know he no longer plays with us, but I wanted to mention... Kyle Lafferty, because we all know the circumstances that he faced, not only from a football perspective, but in his life ahead of this massive game for his country, but he still answered the bell, pulled on the shirt and ran his heart and soul out, and for that, I'm, I'm just so damn proud of him, and I've got so much respect for the laddie, and I, I, just, I just wanted to say he made his country and his family proud by going out there, pulling on the shirt, and before we move on, I just wanted to pay my respects and give my best wishes to the Lafferty family as well. Moving over to the next country, we are off to South Africa, and this is one of the main reasons why I'm so excited about today's video, because I get to talk about Bugani Zungu, who was absolutely immaculate again and I'm sure you're getting sick of it. you heard me speak about him four months ago you heard me speak about him when we finally announced him and you hit well in fact we all saw what he was capable of doing in that game versus Hamilton and well in his most recent international game people he went ahead and put on a show I mean just look at this people this is what this laddie is doing with the football, literally inches away from grabbing an assist, he was truly slaying in Michael Bain because every touch with the football was an explosion of talent and it was just gorgeous to watch, man. But it wasn't just the fact that he was creating chances and passing the ball for fun in that game. He also got on the score sheet with a bullet header showing a bit of strength and ability in the air as well, which is going to go doing wonders in Scottish football with the amount of crosses and corners and set pieces that we get. So the fact that he's got this in his game as well is very, very exciting. But it does need to be said, he was a second-half substitute in this game, but the way he played with the football, the fact that you go on the score sheet, you could genuinely say, despite him only being a second half substitute, you could argue that he could and should have been man of the match. And where Zongu left with an incredible performance, we now move over to a truly incredible, remarkable game of football. Now we are obviously away to Nigeria to talk about Leon Balogun and Joe Rebo, who both started for the Super Eagles and for 60 minutes, both of them were super and the result was because it was 4-1 then unfortunately Balogun took a heavy challenge and had to come off the park and that is when the game completely flipped on its head as the game finished for each people as the opposition scored three goals in 15 minutes. Now regarding our players here, yes I mentioned Balogun did come off the game after a heavy challenge that did see him limp off the park but the fact that he was able to walk off the park makes me a wee bit calmer than it would be if he had to get stretchered off or anything like that. We know he's had a couple of wee issues so far this season, so I'm hoping this is more of a precautionary sub rather than a reactionary one to a match of getting badly injured because he fired out on social media earlier. None of the, the, the Nigerian manager, I should say, sorry, didn't mention the severity of the injury. So fingers crossed that it's nothing serious and it was just a bit of precaution given how the game was at that point, 4-1. No point in risking Balogun, who up to that point had a fantastic game. A football, knowing how the game actually went, I'm sure if he was able to carry on, the manager would have kept him on because that last 20 minutes for them 
was absolutely bogging. That kind of leads me, unfortunately, to Joe Reba, where Leon Balogun is getting a lot of praise for his performance. The same can't be said for Joe Aribo as it's very, very mixed. Some people saying he's one of the best players for Nigeria. Other people are saying he should have been subbed off very, very early into the second half as they apparently ran out of gas in the second half. But to me, if you go ahead and look at the goals that Nigeria conceded in the second half, I think it's very harsh to try and blame Joe Ariba because it's not him losing his man. It's not him no tracking his man back. I think that was on the shoulders of these midfield partners that he was playing me, but I am not going to sit here and say it was a vintage Joe Aribo performance because it wasn't, but some of the critics for me, very, very harsh on Joe. Pick up your bags, people, because we're on another plane and we're flying to Croatia. That's right, we are off to BB country where a lot of people was worried and asking questions and being clickbaited by pathetic news media out there, the fact that Barisic could miss and have to self-isolate for 14 days as the Croatian captain tested positive. Well, thankfully, that has all been hushed because Barisic started the most recent game versus Sweden and went ahead and played the entire 90 minutes. So that right there answers the question of, does BB have to self-isolate? No, he wasn't in close proximity of the captain. So everyone, relax take a breath, but regarding Barisic's overall performance for Croatia, I wouldn't even say it was either good or it was bad in the game. Now, Sweden did go ahead and win the game 2-1, which is a very poor result, I think, for Croatia. They'll be very disappointed in that. But again, I wouldn't say it was necessarily on Barisic. he done what he done. Got wide, whipped in a couple of crosses. There just seems to be something wrong with Croatia right now, and they're really on a downward spiral. And you know what, actually, as we just mentioned, the fact that Croatia did get beat 2-1 off Sweden, let's switch jerseys, go on the other half and talk about Sweden then, shall we? As Big Philippe Hollander, did he get to play some football? No, he was not a substitute in the first game as he wasn't in the squad at all. And in his most recent game, as the one we just spoke about versus Croatia, he was actually an unused sub. So aye. That's it. <laughs> now, where there was no dramas with Hollander not playing a game of football and it was quick and easy to get done, the same cannot be said for Romania people because if you watch this series regularly every month that we do it we spoke about last month the fact that Hadji kind of spoke out against the Romanian manager as they were once again just pummeled badly when they shouldn't be getting pummeled at all because this is a good outfit but the manager continues to struggle in the job and setting his team up which I think is wrong and I think Hadji's right on that but after that we all kind of question what would happen for the next time the international duty came would he still be selected by the manager after what Hadji said well we got the answer people the answer is no he wasn't called up for the international team now again there was no answers on whether or not that was the reason he was omitted from the first team squad and he was called up for the under 21s however and he will be playing Tuesday night versus Denmark so best of luck to the Romanian Prince Hadji who is the league leader in assists and it is baffling that he isn't being selected for his country so I imagine there's a wee bit of friction there but again we won't know until the next international. Now as this video is almost finished let's go ahead and talk about somebody who isn't he? That's right, people, terrible jokes, you know where I'm going. We're off to Finland. And the game that's literally just finished before I started recording today's video, if you know me, if you follow me on social media, sorry, you know I was watching the game and I was watching it for your man, Saucy, Saucy Glenn, who again just continues to shine at international level. And the performances that he's putting in for Finland are very reminiscent of the last couple of weeks you've seen at Rangers, where he's not restricted to just be a central defensive midfielder, but when he's able to drop up shoulder and beat a man and go forward with the ball and be a part of the attack and not only the defending, you really see what this kid is all about. And he's a fantastic footballer, man. He started the night versus Bulgaria as Finland, easy one. And honestly, he strolled through the game he fit born. If you go back and you look at the game versus France as well, yes, he came on as a second half substitute when Finland were already winning 2-0, but the control that he showed and the composure, it's no, it's no doubt to me or no surprise to me that the Finnish manager looked at Kamara and went, right, we're against a very good side, we have a 2-0 lead here, let's bring Glenn on and see the game out. He was absolutely spectacular. So for the third international round up in a row, Glenn Kamara, Outstanding. And last but not least, people, we face one more trip, one more flight, and we're off to Colombia to speak about the man, the myth, the Alfredo frickin' Morelos. And where the majority of today's video has been pretty happy as people have been performing and doing well and being used 
correctly. The same can be said for Alfredo because I'm getting sick to death. He was sitting here crazy times watching these games of football to only see Morelos get substituted on and getting played right wing. Yet again, people, Morelos comes onto a game of football where it's done. They're getting beat 2-0 versus Uruguay. The game is over. They bring on Alfredo and do they play him up front? No. Right wing once again and it, it just doesn't work there and it's so frustrating to watch. Now sometimes yes he is drifting into the centre probably mere his natural instincts but I would love to see him just go as a number nine and get the service of your game. Always like that that can put a ball on a sixpence. I'd love to see him in and around the box but unfortunately it's not quite given the opportunity yet. But again there is another game so fingers crossed that Alfredo finally gets used centre forward for his country. That being said, that is us all done and dusty. That is the International Rangers Roundup giving you a wee update on who's playing well, who's on form and who's coming in if this game at the weekend versus Aberdeen on the highest of freaking highs. And with that being said, all that's left for me today is thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you are still watching, what did you make of the International Roundup? Who do you think impressed you if you watched any of the games they fit but who do you want to see maybe a wee bit more of it'd be great to get your opinions down there in the comment section below but as always I've been CJ Over 92 thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves all the best and bye bye